Guys, sometimes the stars, well, they align. And at approximately 10 in the morning yesterday, the stars aligned for me. The seven out of five God Roll Midnight Coup dropped in my hands. Now listen, I know. Cross, you're literally just putting this on the screen to flex. I am. It's not often that I get the God Roll, but here I am wielding it. The question is, is this in fact the role you should be chasing? Guys, we are going to extensively go over Midnight Coup today. This was the former Leviathan Raid Hand Cannon, and it used to be a lightweight 150 round per minute hand cannon. But now, it has returned to us with random rolls, still a kinetic weapon, but it's an adaptive 140. Now, before we start digging into perks and everything else, I do need to mention something real quick. Kinetic weapons in the final shape are still going to be useful. We talked about it the other day when hitting up our infographics that Court provided for our prismatic subclass, but kinetic weapons are both going to contribute to those bars when reaching transcendence. I know the first reaction when seeing prismatic is, oh my god, who in the hell is going to be using kinetic weapons? But they're still going to have a use. With that being said though, let's start by comparing the stats of Midnight Coup with some of our favorite 140 round per minute hand cannons in that kinetic slot. Now considering that this was originally a 150 round per minute hand cannon, Bungie made sure to pick up the stats just slightly, something Chris Proctor revealed on the Destiny Massive Breakdown podcast just a few weeks ago, but they gave it plus 10 range, plus 5 stability, and plus 5 airborne effectiveness. So understand stat-wise, what you're looking at is a more improved Midnight Coup. With that being said though, when comparing it to some of our other kinetic slot legendary 140s, it happens to have the second worst range sitting at just 40, just slightly ahead of spare rations at 36, with IS Luna at the top there at a base range of 51. But it's not that far behind hand cannons like Rose and Allstringer, which sit at about 43 and 46 respectively. And those are two of the most popular kinetic 140s. Our 45 stability is tied with that of Rose, which is actually at the lowest, but even then I do think that 45 is still solid, especially when we get into the perks. In terms of handling, we have 60, which is tied with that of Rose, although keep in mind, Rose is a bit of a unique case as it's a light weight 140. Not an adaptive, meaning it gets the benefits of increased handling intrinsically, which is why so many people like using ropes. It's just very fluid. Now, in terms of aim assist, it is the highest out of everything, sitting at 90 aim assist. It also has 24 airborne effectiveness, making it also the highest. It has a base magazine of 12, which is fantastic. One thing I noticed when playing with the tank cannon was that the magazine size was very large and noticeable. Now, its recoil direction is oddly at 80, but remember, we have deterministic recoil cool now. So we can't really judge things based on that stat alone. On top of that, it's a hand cannon, which is weird in itself. It's much easier to track the recoil of an automatic weapon like a submachine gun or an auto rifle. Hand cannons, not so much. Overall though, at least on paper, Midnight Coup has a lot of good things to offer. Now on to our perks. In our third column, we have Outlaw, Firefly, Shoot to Loot, Explosive Payload, Moving Target, Attrition Orbs, and Inline Action. In our fourth column, we have Rampage, Kinetic Tremors, Zim Moments, One for All, Frenzy, Opening shot and desperate measures. Now let's take a look at our PV options first. There are quite a lot to choose from here. Column 3 you have explosive payload where projectiles create an area of effect detonation on impact. This has always been a solid pick inside of PvP. Bungie of course has kind of toned things down when it comes to explosive payload and we'll get into the damage numbers in just a moment in PvP. But explosive payload is a phenomenal perk for PvE players. It passively gives us extra damage as it increases our body shot by 15% and our crit shot damage by 10%. Again keep it mind guys this is also a kinetic weapon and by default it does 10 percent more damage than its energy counterparts so if you take it from the top we're doing 7022 damage per crit here at coral versus an energy weapon of the same archetype doing 5840 that's a big jump guys these things stack up tremendously with the body shot damage going from an energy base of 3746 to 4739 with an explosive payload midnight coup keep in mind guys with all these perks we're going to be going over the enhanced versions of each of these traits as in the final shape you're going to be able to enhance these perks and for enhanced explosive payload guys you're going to tack on an extra plus five reload that's pretty much the best perk there guys i know there are other options we've got shoot the loot which is really nice for picking up orbs or picking up ammo it automatically reloads all your equipped weapons the enhanced version of shoot the loot will give you plus five range we also have attrition orbs and essentially dylan sustained damage creates an orb of power which is roughly 10 shots here from midnight coup and it doesn't have to be on a single target it actually be spread out amongst different targets there's a lot of people that say that we're sleeping on this perk and without a doubt there are moments where attrition orbs will be good but is it worth using over explosive payload for me guys it's not at least not for pve you can make a case for kinetic trimmers and attrition orbs together as that should help 
in proccing attrition orbs. Now, before we move on to our fourth column, we also need to look at Firefly. Precision kills with this weapon increase reload speed and cause the target to explode, dealing solar damage to nearby enemies. Now, this perk is very similar to Dragonfly, but instead, it gives off a solar explosion, and it also grants us plus 50 reload speed on precision kill. It's a very nice stat bump for BVE, and when we can enhance it, this will grant us an extra plus 5 reload speed on precision kills. Again, not a bad perk. I've got a fake bringer today that I still use, and it has Firefly. Now, looking at the perks in our fourth column, the one we're immediately drawn to is Kinetic Tremors. But guys, I am a big fan of Kinetic Tremors. Dealing sustained kinetic damage to a target will emit a shockwave that damages any nearby targets. Now, in hand cannons, this requires six shots to proc. So essentially half of our base magazine, which I know is kind of a lot, and take you a little over two seconds to proc this. The damage is really nice. Each trimmer deals 10,526 damage here at Carl for a total of three trimmers at 31,578 damage. Now this takes our base total damage of 77,088 against Carl to 108,666. Now for DPS, this picks it up quite a bit. We're talking a base of 16,171 to 22,795. Now the only other hand cannon we've had with kinetic trimmers is spare rations, but we didn't have a damage boosting park like explosive payload to pair with it like we do here on Midnight Coup. With that being said though, explosive payload, despite it being two hits per shot, does not proc kinetic trimmers sooner. It's something to keep in mind, guys. It was something we were hoping to see, but not the case. It's still six shots to proc. With that being said though, kinetic trimmers itself has a lot of neat synergy. You can pair it with perks like shoot the loot. And when those trimmers go off, they literally pick up the orbs of power and ammo bricks for you. So you don't even need to directly shoot your weapon at them. It also reduces the amount of shots needed to proc attrition orbs, as each trimmer will count for at least one hit. And if there are other targets that are being hit by those trimmers, you can proc attrition orbs even faster, which is crazy considering the ad density in this game, especially in game modes like Onslaught. Now, the enhanced version of kinetic trimmers is supposed to decrease the amount of shots needed in order to proc a trimmer. And we don't have a hand cannon yet with enhanced kinetic trimmers, so we can't verify this, but I'm going to assume that it's going to be five shots instead of six, similar to our scout rifles. Now, moving on to our more traditional damage perk, we have Rampage, just like the OG guys. Kills with this weapon temporarily increase damage. This stacks at three times. One stack giving 10%, two stacks 21%, three stacks 33.1%, with each stack lasting four and a half seconds. And the enhanced version of this will bring that up to five seconds. Just slightly more forgiveness. I love Rampage, guys, but let's just be real. It has been power crept over the years, and only certain weapons am I willing to pick up Rampage on, especially considering we have the new perk Desperate Measures. Weapon final blows grant bonus damage. Melee and grenade final blows grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. Now, from one single weapon kill, this is a 10% damage bonus, but it lasts for seven seconds, which is already way longer than Rampage. Then if you get a grenade or melee kill, you'll grant yourself times two. This is a 20% increase in damage. Then if you score another grenade or melee final blow, this will grant you times three for a 30% damage bonus. Both times two and times three can also be procced even while the weapon is stoked. You get a grenade kill or a melee final blow and you happen to be holding one of your other weapons, boom, desperate measures will be procced and ready for you to go when you swap. By the way, at any stack of this buff, a single weapon kill from Midnight Coup will refresh the timer. This is a solid perk, guys. We talked about it before. With just one stack, it's already better than Rampage. Then after that, it's pretty similar to Golden Tricorn, but easier to activate and higher uptime. Now, I'm not sure what the enhanced version of this perk is. We'll just have to wait until the final shape. I'm just assuming it's going to be probably a duration bump just for more forgiveness. Then we have Frenzy, where being in combat for an extended time increases damage, handling, and reload speed until you're out of combat. Now, this is a 15% damage buff. It also grants you 100 handling, 100 reload speed, and this lasts for 7.2 seconds. Now, it takes 12 seconds for this perk to activate, but I would say Frenzy is always been a solid perk. Lastly though, we have one for all. This is a 35% increase in damage for 10 seconds after damaging three separate targets within three seconds of each other, but the buff cannot be refreshed. I need to mention that one more time. This buff cannot be refreshed. Now it is easy to reactivate and it's a very simple way to give yourself a high damage buff without needing 
eating any kills. And when you get the enhanced version, this will last for 11 seconds. Now, guys, after going over all these traits, I think it's clear right now, Midnight Coup is very versatile. It has a lot of different trait combinations, all equally deadly. But I want to compare some damage values together real quick. Again, at base, we're dealing 6,424 per crit, giving us a DPS value of 16,171 and a total damage value of 77,088. Now, with Explosive Payload, this is 7,022 per crit with a DPS value of 17,676 and a total damage value of 84,264. Now, we did touch on Kinetic Tremors already, which gave us a DPS value of 22,795 and a total damage value of 108,666. Now, when looking at one for all, this gives us a crit value of 8,672 with a DPS value of 21,830 and a total damage value of 104,064. Now, listen, I know Kinetic Tremors can be situational. What if the ad moves out of the way? What if that high health target just dips out of the AOE damage just a little bit and the damage starts to fall off? You're right. And we are giving you best case scenarios, but this also takes us to the double damage options. For instance, if we add explosive payload plus one for all, this kicks our damage up to 9,480 per crit and a DPS value of 23,864 for total damage value of 113,760. Now, what about explosive payload plus kinetic tremors? Now, this doesn't necessarily buff our tremor damage. That's still locked. And it also doesn't decrease the shots needed in order to proc kinetic tremors. But if you take that damage into account, this gives us a whopping DPS value of 24,300 and a total damage value of 115,842. Guys, I need to mention these are solid damage values. Some of these trait combinations are easier to proc than others, but before we get into my god roll, we need to talk about this origin trait. It is called Indomitability. Final blows grant grenade energy when playing a light subclass or melee energy when playing a darkness subclass. And when you get final blows on a light subclass, this will grant you 5% grenade ability energy. And final blows when using a dark subclass is going to give 5% melee ability energy. It's a pretty solid origin trait, guys. And when we get prismatic, kinetic weapon damage is going to feed into both of those bars of Transcendence. And this origin trait is going to synergize beautifully into that. It's a passive ability bump, guys, that I very much appreciate. Now, in terms of the god role for my PvE players, there are a ton of options. And really, it's going to come down to who you are as a player. Originally, I was leaning toward that Firefly Kinetic Tremor role. I wanted explosions. I wanted AoE. But there's really no synergy here. They can't really feed off of each other. Firefly requires precision hits. Kinetic Tremors requires kinetic hits. But they are both just just two solid perks on their own. One dealing solar explosion damage on precision kills, which is great for taking out groups of ads. The other setting off those trimmers, which is great for taking down tankier targets. And yes, there are moments where those explosions can occasionally double up with each other if you manage to time it correctly. But again, I need to stress, you need to get off half of your base magazine to even proc kinetic trimmers. At the same time, that's not too big of a problem considering we have mag boosting perks, whether it's tack mag or even a pendant mag, all of which can help there. Now, one combination that's very interesting is Firefly and One For All. Firefly helps with ad clear from that AOE explosion, and then One For All gives us a damage bonus, which is great for dealing with higher health targets. Now, the synergy here is pretty nice because that one AOE explosion from Firefly can actually proc One For All. For instance, you get a kill with a precision kill and that AOE explosion hits multiple targets. Boom, one for all is propped. I personally am not gotten this role yet, but I'm really curious to try it out. With that being said though, I think explosive payload is just too good of a perk in game modes that require more hits. I think at level content, Firefly, one for all, do go crazy. But when we start talking like legend content, master, grandmaster, I want that extra damage. I want explosive payload. Now you can rock explosive payload with one for all. This will net us a 48% increase to our crit damage and a 55% increase to our body damage. For instance, our base damage is 6,424 damage per crit at Carl and 4,121 damage per body. But with both of those perks propped, we're dealing 9,480 damage per crit and 6,398 per body. And this is what it's really going to come down to. Would you prefer explosive payload plus one for all or explosive payload plus kinetic tremors? And you can throw desperate measures in there, frenzy in there if you want, considering the reload increase from frenzy. But for me to just single out 
one god roll of Midnight Coup in PvE is very difficult. I want a Firefly Kinetic Tremor roll, a Firefly One for All roll, an Explosive Payload Kinetic Tremor roll, an Explosive Payload One for All roll. And now you know why my vault is always slammed. Regardless, there are a ton of fantastic trait combinations for PvE players. And before you jump up and say, Cross, what about Outlaw? What about Enlightened Action? Look, you can use those perks, but the ones I just gave you guys, those are the ones I want. And look, I've already gotten very, very lucky with one drop already. If I can get lucky again, oh, give me that explosive payload kinetic trimmer roll with a one for all swap off. My shiny drop that I really want for PVE would be Firefly explosive payload in the third column that I can both enhance and one for all kinetic trimmers in that fourth column. Now listen, the chance of getting this drop, I can't even imagine the odds. But if you have that right now sitting in your vault, you need to go out and buy a lottery ticket now. Now with PVE out of the way, let's talk PVP. Boy, oh boy. The first time I picked up Midnight Coup and brought it inside of PVP, I'm not gonna lie guys, I didn't like it. However, once I obtained this role, being accurized rounds, small board, which is actually what I settled on, moving target in some moments, I started to feel it. Dude, the three taps were starting to roll in. I was getting accustomed to this weapon again. And let me just say, I know this probably doesn't make that big of a difference, but I find the barrel just to be slightly longer than what we're currently used to. And that kind of messes with me just slightly when going in for the shot. I'm used to playing with those chody hand cannons. I mean, look at Frontier Cry, right? That chody bastard is really easy to aim. There's not a lot of Travel time when naming down sites. But Midnight Coup, it's got a lot of barrel fellas. You gotta get kinda used to it. With that being said though, the PvP numbers are 80 per crit, 45 per body, with a base range of 29.4 meters. Now, if you add an accurized round roll, range master work, hammer forge, this would kick you up to 70 range, and that reaches up to 33.45 meters. Now, I did play with full board a little bit. Keep in mind though, full board really does hurt your other stats, despite substantially bumping up your range. But all those things combined, it would give you 34.1 three meters. Now opening shots, plus full board, plus range master work, accurized rounds, all the goodies. You're talking 37.5 meters from that first shot. And then again, it drops off to 34.13 meters for your consecutive shots. Now, despite our health increases, everything is still the same. It's still a three tap, 0.87 seconds. Bungie also buffed hand cannons here recently, adding even more forgiveness to maintain that three tap, even with slight damage fall off. Now, I still think having high range is the way to go on this hand cannon. Hammerforge rifling, accurized rounds, that feels really good to me. And if you're concerned about stability, I think in that final column, Zen moment is the way to go. That felt really, really good on this hand cannon, guys. And from the first midnight coup that I played with to the second one, Zen moment was a noticeable difference. And yes, I did get to play with an opening shot roll and it's not bad opening shot is still a great trait especially for lining up that first shot but it's those consecutive shots that i normally lose out on i need those follow-up crits i want the three tap now the enhanced version of zim moments doesn't really do a whole bunch again causing damage with the weapon reduces recoil and flinch over time the enhanced version just simply improves base stability so it tacks on plus five stability regardless though that's still appreciated and i do think zim moments is the go-to perk for pvp players in that final column could you do ram page for a slight damage bump sure opening shot is still solid and even desperate measures is something you could take advantage of if you want to albeit a bit more difficult to proc for times two and times three as that's situational the question really comes down to our third column which one should you go with explosive payload or moving targets that's a tough one guys see i love explosive payload on hand cannons like rose matter of fact this is my god roll rose right here slide shot explosive payload and i just got it not that long ago but it is one of my favorite hand cannons in the game my other favorite hand cannon in the game is nation of beasts it's one of my most used hand cannons inside of trials and one of my favorite trade combinations on it is keep away an explosive payload the problem with explosive payload is that it does slightly less damage now i can still get the three tap so keep that in mind guys you're still going to be able to get that three tap but at the same time when you start to enter damage fall off territory past that 33 and a half meters with that hammer forge rifling roll that we just mentioned you're going to start to see situations where you don't get the three tap the three tap you would have gotten had you not been rocking explosive payload now does that mean explosive payload is garbage absolutely not i still use explosive payload all the time i religiously use it on rose and on nation of beasts and i don't plan on changing those perks up at least not anytime soon i guess the real question is is moving target the play now moving target's a weird one because it increases movement speed and target acquisition when moving while aiming down sights it also grants you 10 aim assists while aiming down sights now notice we already have 90 aim assists hell 10 more we're at max now 
that's such a strange thing because Hawkmoon is in a similar situation. You see, it has high aim assist sitting at 93. So a lot of people say moving target is wasted, especially considering you can put on things like kinetic targeting. A lot of folks jumped up and said, I am the storm is the way to go on Hawkmoon. And look, I get it. I actually have two roles that I keep, but let me be honest. The role that I use the most is my moving target Hawkmoon. I don't know why. Maybe it is the ADS movement speed that I get with it that I like, but part of me feels that it actually does help me despite me running into that aim assist ceiling. When I hit that Kaka shot, I can feel it. And I feel like moving target carries me on that final shot. At the same time, if I could have the option between explosive payload on Hawkmoon or moving target, well, hell fellas, I'm going explosive payload. But Cross, wouldn't that just diminish your Kaka shot? That's a fair point. So guys, I'm actually putting a revision in on the PvP review. You see, previously, I had stated that if my back was up against the wall, I would still choose Rose. And I felt good about that stance. Considering Rose, its intrinsic lightweight, its ability to handle so well, its fluid, thin. Another Midnight Coup dropped on me this afternoon. And it's this roll right here. Full board, accurized rounds, explosive payload, and zen moments. Now guys, I picked up this roll. I went and played a game of Crucible, and it was one of those things that I felt like I could not be beat. This roll is absolutely cooking. Now, again, like I said a second ago, explosive payload still can't get the three tap when you start to get into damage fall off territory. But let me just say it handles its ones so damn good. And I don't really know exactly how many stacks are gained per hit with Zen moments. But keep in mind, explosive payload does give you multiple hits per shot. So I almost felt like the weapon, despite having full board, felt extremely stable with Zen moments. The moment I tagged that first shot, I felt great. Needless to say, my god roll really hasn't changed much here either. Explosive payload Zim moment is the one I want. Whereas in my original PvP review, I said that having things like moving targets, opening shots, the ability to swap back and forth between those, I'm throwing all that out the window. Listen to me, fellas. Explosive payload Zim moment is the way to go. The original audio, I had not quite played with the perfect god roll. But after playing with the perfect god roll, even though I love this shiny drop that I got, it's sexy. This base midnight coup i'm gonna take into the final shape and probably the shining drop as well just saying and keep in mind the enhanced versions are gonna make this even better so guys that is our complete review for midnight coup i know this was a very very long one but dude there's just so many things to talk about when you have such good trait combinations these are truly some of the best weapons bungie has ever given us if you're wondering how to get started on into the light and the onslaught game mode we have a guide on that so we'll link that down below and if you're curious about what my thoughts are on the god rolls for these weapons. We did an overview for all these weapons, but keep in mind, those were just basic overviews. We'll continue to do individual reviews of all of these as we dig deeper. But fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.